when small is big. When small is big. We live in a society that follows a different view. Bigger is better. A bigger car. A bigger house. A bigger property. And in ministry, a bigger church, a mega church. All wanted in the shortest period of time. Small things are viewed as unimportant. This is a worldly view of success based on size and numbers. People forget many worldly successful people or businesses or ministries were once small, growing only on a well-prepared, solid foundation of experience gained through struggle. Some things, however, in a secular view will be considered small and a failure if they do not grow or are replaced by something bigger right away. We are impatient today. We want things now. Yet, we need to think that a small acorn will become a large oak tree. A small tree growing in the crack of a rock can eventually break that rock into pieces. A small fire can burn down an entire forest. Jesus used a small, or one of the translations says, a little boy with a small lunch, five loaves and two fish, to perform a miracle that fed 5,000 people. John 6, verses 8 to 11. God does not use the big things. He uses the small things to accomplish his big purpose. Amen? The world says bigger is better now. The Bible says sometimes small is big. God has his own timetable as to how or when things will be accomplished. We're impatient. We want things now. We don't want to wait. It says in, in Isaiah 40, 31, to wait upon the Lord and our strength will be renewed and we will mount on eggs as wiggles. The problem is we don't want to wait. We want everything now. What we see is something small, insignificant, and a failure God sees as part of his larger plan and purpose. J. Michael Shannon said, Ripley's Believe It or Not says that Craig Dawson has an unusual habit. He keeps an eye on the ground as he jogs. This is not for balance, it's not for safety, and it's not even because he's shy. He is looking for spare change. During the past 25 years, he found $8,100 in lost coins. There is a lesson for all of us in this. This reminds us of the power of a small act done consistently over the long haul. Little things can become big things. In Zechariah 4 and verse 10, it says, Who dares despise the day of small things? Since the seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zebrabella. From what the Bible says about the day of small things, forerunner commentary, it, it condenses this verse and gives the background to what this verse is saying about the day of small things. Because as I said, we live in a society that is pushing for the day of big things not small things. No one who understands God and what he is working out looks down on the times when only insignificant things seem to be accomplished. Those who understand what God is doing know that the day of small things must take place before the big things can happen. There's something called 
preparation. God does not put us into big responsibility unless he takes us through small things to prepare us for that big responsibility. It is important to realize from the historical point of view that even when this temple was finished in this portion that is mentioned in Zechariah, even when the temple was finished, the people complained. This is nothing like Solomon's temple. It seemed a small thing in itself, and it was. It was just a bare representation of the original temple that David built to Solomon. Nevertheless, it was necessary. The small things that happened back then, the Jews returning from exile with a great many of the Levites and the priests, building the temple, putting a wall around the city, which had been destroyed, and eventually colonizing most of the old land of Israel, particularly around the Sea of Galilee, made the birth and ministry of Jesus possible. He had to have a temple to come to. So all these small things that happened with this tiny number of people who came back from Babylon and all the work they did over a hundred years or so, all these small things that they did, prepared the way for the, very, for the very big thing of the first coming of Jesus Christ, meaning his entire life, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection were all based upon the preparations that were done in all these little things that were done over a hundred years as the temple was restored. Without the small things, that big thing would never have happened. God was preparing for the big thing through the small things. And he does that all the time. Thus, any faithful person will not despise the times when only small things are happening. Because they mean that big things are coming. And they should prepare themselves for them. Are you discouraged? Because you only see little things happening in your life? You only see small things? And you're impatient. You want things to happen yesterday. But God is working through you and is preparing something bigger to be accomplished through you. The small acts of service God calls us to do can be leading to bigger things that we do not see at that moment. We're so focused on what we think should happen. We get discouraged. Oh, I don't see God really using me. Well, we're basing our understanding by judging what we see God doing in other people. And we get impatient about what God is doing in our life, which we seem to think is small and insignificant. But we forget that those that God has raised up and is doing great things in their lives, they had to go through a lot of struggle and small things to prepare them for where they are now. Amen? But we're impatient. We want to be there now. We don't want to go through the struggle. Over 44 years ago, I sent a subscription to a pastor's magazine to a pastor I picked out randomly from another Christian organization that published names and address, addresses of Christian leaders that had been helped by that ministry. And these people wrote letters of thanks and they published the letters with the addresses. So I randomly picked a name of a pastor in Malawi. And that small act led to us connecting by letter and my eventually going to Malawi in 1983. A small thing that led to bigger things. I once was on a bus in rural Malawi and all the seats were full. An elderly Muslim man got on the bus and so I gave him my seat. A small act 
It didn't cost me anything. And being younger, I still had my balance because the bus was going over bumps. <laughs> and being tall, my head was sometimes coming in contact with the ceiling of the bus. <laughs> But I knew I was young, and I could handle that, but this elderly man could not. No one else offered him a seat. What I did not know, that he was the representative of a major Muslim chief in that area. And he, as the representative, told the chief that I, as a Christian pastor, had given up my seat for him. As a Westerner, I was one of very few Westerners at that time in that area, and so I was better known than I realized. People talk, <laughs> so they knew who I was. A small act like these, or small acts the Israelites did over a hundred years, can all lead to something greater that is part of God's greater plan and purpose. Amen? Be encouraged. God has put you in a place for a purpose. Whether it's where you work or where you live, there are people that God will connect you to that need to be connected to him. And through the small acts that you do at work, through the small acts that you do in your community, those acts of love, those acts of service, you are having impact for the, for the glory of God. Amen? You may not see it, but over time, as people, and people are watching you, they're, they're keeping an eye on you. Oh, that person's a Christian, so is their behavior and their words matching what they profess? And over time, as they see the little acts of kindness, it has an impact. And it may lead someone to come to you. 1 Peter 3.15 says, always be ready to give an answer to the hope that is within you when you are asked. Well, you may be asked because of the little acts of kindness that others have seen in you. Amen? And it may take time. It may be a year. And someone will say, oh, you've been working here a year, and I've been watching you. <laughs> You're different. Why are you doing this and that? And those small acts of kindness, may, God may use those through you to speak to a person's heart and to draw them to ask, what is the reason you believe? Matthew 13, verses 31 to 32. He told them another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field, and this is smaller than all other seeds. But when it is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Small things done for the kingdom of God can become greater things. Amen? Mustard seed, really, really small. Smallest of seeds becomes a big tree. Matthew 17, verse 20. And he said to them, because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. How often do we think, oh, my faith is so small, and who am I? How can God use me? Say, if you even have a little bit of faith and trust, God can do great things through that little faith that you have in him. Because you have little faith in a great God for whom nothing's impossible. Even faith that is small accomplishes more than no faith at all. Do not diminish what God can do in and through you. Don't limit God. God is limitless in what he can do, but we limit 
him in our lives. We put a limit on God because we don't trust him. Elijah did miracles. Elijah was a, a man just like us. And he trusted God. And he saw the power of God. He was no different than us, but he had a faith. Matthew 13, verse 33. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked itself all through the dough. As you do small acts of kindness and love for Jesus, as he said we are to do, not an option, Matthew 25, verse 31 to 46, help those who are sick, those who are thirsty, those who are hungry, those who are naked, those who are in prison. That's not an option. He said, as you help them, it is like you are directly helping me. As we help people in need around us, it will have an impact on them. We may not see it right at the time. As we help others, we are to do that in the name of Jesus. Whether we see outwardly any response, if we're expecting to help people and the only reason we're doing it is to get a adrenaline rush when someone says, thank you, you're a great person. <laughs> if we're doing things to be thanked, we're doing it for the wrong reason. Jesus said to minister to people whether you're thanked or not. He said, love your enemies. Your enemies aren't going to pat you on the back and say, oh, you're a great person. <laughs> we are to minister those small acts of kindness and service. And we're not to have a little scale. Oh, I've helped this person, but they haven't responded for five months. So I'll just give up on that person. Jesus did not say we're to help people by what we see happening as a result. It says we go by faith, not by sight. We, have been to, we are to be faithful in doing what God has called us to do in helping others those little bits. Remember this, even a smile can accomplish more than a frown. Does it cost you to smile? Does it cost you to say to someone, have a great day? No, but yet that smile and that saying can mean a lot to someone who is struggling with depression. It may be just what that person needed to hear at that particular time. That small act of encouragement may keep that person from ending their life. You don't know. When small becomes big, the small things we do can have great impact for the kingdom of God. Don't second-guess God. God has put you where you are for a reason. Don't judge what you think is important based on what others are doing, because what's important is are you faithfully doing what God has called you to do in the small things. Luke 16, verse 10. He who is faithful in a very little thing is also faithful in much. And he who is dishonest in a very little thing is also dishonest in much. Luke 16, verse 10. Are we faithful in the little things? Or as I mentioned, are we focused on only doing big things? Because that's a trap. Why is it a trap? If we're focused so much on doing big things right away, it means we can be focused on ourselves, on the attention we will get by doing big things. It's very, very dangerous 
that if we have a desire to do big things right away, A, we may not be prepared because we haven't gone through the struggles to prepare us for doing the big things. And number two, emotionally, we may not, may not be ready for the attention and the applause to our egos. Have we thought that God is preparing us to doing the small things so we can handle the big things? And it takes time. It takes time. So I have some questions for you. Did David become king right away? No. He used five little smooth stones to defeat the giant Goliath after years of being prepared as a shepherd, protecting sheep, doing those routine little things day by day by day. 1 Samuel 17, verses 45 to 50. It was after the encounter with Goliath that saw that uh, David was anointed to become future king. Not before. Second question. Did Joseph become the second most powerful man in Egypt right away? He did not. He first was a slave, been sold into slavery by his brothers. He first was a slave doing small things in Potiphar's house. Then he was a prisoner doing small things in an Egyptian jail. All the time being prepared for what God had planned for him. Genesis 37, to, from Genesis chapter 37 to chapter 50. You can read the story of Joseph. So, in both the examples of David and Joseph, it took time to prepare them for the great thing that God wanted to accomplish through them. Amen? It took time. God has something to do through you in your life. Don't think, well, it, shouldn't ha it should have happened yesterday. I should be doing this now. Or well, maybe you're not ready now. <laughs> God is giving you more little things to do to chip away at pride, <laughs> to chip away at aspects of your character that are not in line with his will before he will open the door for you to do the big thing to accomplish his purpose in your life. Are you content to faithfully be doing the small things? Are you content to faithfully be? I've, I've used this illustration before. I will keep using it. The usher at an evangelistic meeting, just, I mean, people would say, oh, he's just an usher. Just doing his job, getting people to their seats. And one night before the evangelist came on, all the seats were taken, the two young men came, and he could have said, go home, come back at another meeting. And he went out of his way as an usher to take those young men to two seats right at the front on the platform. Now, that was a small act, right? He was doing his usher thing. He was ushering. He knew there were seats available, but they were right at the front on the platform. And those young men went on the platform, and when the evangelist gave a call to commitment, both of those young men came forward and gave their hearts to Jesus. And one of those young men was Billy Graham, whose life impacted millions for the kingdom. When small is big, the small thing that that usher did 
an impact on the life of a man whom God used mightily to impact millions. Amen? Do not diminish what God is and will do through the little things that you're doing now. Be encouraged. Small is big when God is involved. Do not get discouraged in thinking that what you are doing is too small and too unimportant. Be faithful. Wait and see what God will do through you. Wait and see what God will do in and through you as you faithfully serve him in the little things day by day. They may be routine. They may be monotonous. In the job that you're doing, but people are watching. People are watching you. And God will speak through your actions and speak through your words in ways you do not even realize for his kingdom as you shine for him. People will see the glory of God, hopefully, in our lives, in the actions we do before others. Amen? The little things. We don't know what God will do. I was in another meeting in Malawi, and I'd gotten so spoiled when there were meetings, there were many people that came forward at the close of a service. And at this service, only one person came forward, a woman, for recommitment to Christ. And I was discouraged, because for me, this was small. <laughs> I'd gotten used to many people coming forward, so I was discouraged because I didn't see more numbers. <laughs> but I finally said, praise God, this woman has recommitted her life to Christ. What I did not know was the son of the most powerful Muslim teacher in the whole district was in that service, and God captured his heart through that message. And he later came to faith in Christ. But I was discouraged by what I saw, not realizing that God was doing a great thing that I did not see at the time. Be encouraged, people of God, and being faithful in these little things because you do not know what God is doing through those little things that you are doing. You don't know whom God is impacting through those little things. You don't know what God is preparing you for through these little things. Now, for the future. Wait and see what God will do through you. When small is big. Faithfully serve him in the little things. People today lack hope. They lack purpose. They're looking for meaning in life. May they see that hope. May they see that meaning. May they see that purpose through the little things that you do for the glory of God as you shine for Jesus. Do not put yourself down. Never say, this is nothing. This is of no importance. Faithfully continue to serve him. One day you will see how mightily God worked through your life in the little thing, in impacting the lives of others. Amen? I pray that this message that God laid in my heart has been of encouragement to you because we're in a world that's discouraging. It's easy to get down in a world that says bigger is better. <laughs> we get caught up in that whole mentality of our society's focus on bigger things, little things. 
from a big God with a big plan for the world and for your life. Be faithful in those little things. At this time, we will enter the communion uh, portion of the service. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this cup and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We are proclaiming his second coming as we partake of communion in celebrating what he has done through his first coming. And as we partake of communion, we also know that his presence is also here with us now. Let us quiet our hearts. Dear, dear Lord Jesus, I pray that you will reveal any area of, of our life that is not honoring to you. And I pray even now, by what you reveal to us through your Holy Spirit, that you may provide us this opportunity to ask forgiveness over anything that we are struggling with and things that are bringing us into defeat we thank you, Lord, that in you we have victory and are more than conquerors in and through you. Romans 8, 37. I pray even now that as we quiet our hearts, as we commune with you, Lord, we desire to be people of holiness. We desire to be people reflecting your image in our life for our identity is in you. For you said in John 3.30, he must increase, but I must decrease. Lord, we desire to be more like you. Day by day, we thank you in your precious name. Amen. Now, memory of that body broken, completely broken, for our sin, for our iniquities. Take, eat. Now in memory of that blood shed for the remission, the forgiveness of our sins. Take, drink. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to remember your sacrifice where you purchased our life. Our life is not our own. It's bought with a price. Your life on the cross when you conquered death. Lord, help us to keep remembering that you promised to be with us always, even unto the end of the world. We're never alone. Help us to keep shining for you by what we do and by what we say. We ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. May God bless you, and until, by the grace of God, we come to you again, may you have a week when his power and presence, provision and peace becomes even deeper in your life as you faithfully serve him in the small things. God bless you. Goodbye for now.